supply chain superstars, and welcome back to Munich, Germany. We're here at Solana Solo Sphere. I'm Savannah Peterson, joined with Rob Strache today. I'm feeling more efficient than I ever thought I could. I, I, you? I think our processes, even in between segments, are becoming more efficient as the day goes along. Yeah, we, well, I, I would agree with that. We're saving more and more time. Speaking of saving time and doing things efficiently, I'm very excited to welcome Peter, the GM of Supply Chain here as well. Peter, thank you so much for taking time in what is undoubtedly a very busy week for you. Yeah. Thanks enough for having me. Yeah. 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 So, You've been at Salonis for a while now, almost seven years. You are in charge of one of the most important, if not the most important, divisions of the team, supply chain. There are some really exciting announcements going on right now with supply chain and AI and how that fits into the ecosystem. Give us an overview. Yeah. So I think the, the most interesting part, personally, is that um, with the developments that we had over the last year and also the last month, um, we really um, tap into this po uh, position of where we can apply process intelligence holistically across the supply chain and essentially enable you to use that intelligence for decision making, taking actions, using AI um, to essentially improve fundamentally the way you work in supply chain, right? And I think this is, this is what excites me a lot. Um, there's really a new way of working also that we facilitate and support. Um, and a lot of the product announcements around AI data about like how, how far we can go also in covering um, the supply chain context. Super exciting and, and super obviously looking forward to also see what we're what we going to work on the next couple of years as well. So I, I think one of the things that Exxon Volvo mm -hmm. talked about, yeah. you know, you know uh, and I think there was some uh, Bolivia or Peru, I can't remember mm -hmm. where they were, but mm -hmm. it was far flung, yeah. front, as they call yeah. it, frontier location. Yeah. They were looking at how they optimized yeah. the supply chains so they wouldn't have downtime. Yeah. Because obviously, and having been yeah. in oil and gas myself, yeah. downtime of any yeah. of those facilities yeah. costs lots of money. Yeah. Some people may think of supply chain as just getting a good from yeah. here to there. How do you see supply yeah. chain? Yeah. So, generally speaking, when we at Salona talk about enter and supply chain, and a lot of people are talking about enter and supply chain. Um, we are starting from the perspective of that particular company, right? Which means anything that you do in order to procure goods for your production or for, for your distribution, your traditional production and manufacturing processes, inbound logistics, outbound logistics, warehouse management, order management, all this is what we generally speaking think of supply chain. Obviously, there's more to that, right? If you think um, about a company, it's not only what they do, but there is typically a supply chain that happens before and after. Um, that's something that we're slowly looking at, right? We have this um, um, announcement of the network, so where we're really also facilitating the data exchange. So we kind of, I would say, uh, the definition is more or less what happens in the four walls of the company, and we're kind of slowly pushing the boundaries to say we want to see more of what's happen, uh, happening outside there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we uh, talked to Divya about that earlier today, mm -hmm. and saying, I, I said to the fact that it's a network is more than just another yeah. portal, yeah. and in that data, it, yeah. it, it looks like it's helping organizations map their processes, yeah. and it's even more than what we used to call EDI. Yeah. And things like that. Are you seeing organizations really embracing that to mm -hmm. optimize that yeah. supply chain? Yeah. I, I think the very, very interesting part about supply chain, now we're getting a little bit more conceptual, is that in the end, like, you could almost be like these different organizations being like an arbitrary structure of your whole supply chain, right? So you're creating data silos just as much as you're creating silos within your organization with the different functions. And um, I think the appetite to uh, optimize also processes across different companies is very large, but it's also um, a little bit dependent on what kind of industry you are in, right? So what is, what, what is your typical, um, say, collaboration with your suppliers, with your customers? In automotive, for example, that integration is very, very tight. So it's more natural to say, okay, I actually want to also work with, with my suppliers, with my customers to optimize um, how we're doing, because in the end, like, these benefits should be there for everybody, not only for one particular company. So I would say um, there's a lot of appetite, not only exchanging information, but also working on collaboration. Um, 
and some industries naturally are a little bit more advanced than others. I'm curious because I come from a, a supply chain and manufacturing yeah. background. Yes. I've been looking forward to talking to you yeah. all day, yeah. which is awesome. There are so many junctures mm -hmm. and opportunities for process improvement yeah. or process yeah. failure across yeah. across the spectrum, also in terms of morale for the people involved yeah. in those processes, both internally as well as the end customer, yeah. say, procuring a good or whatever that might be, or ordering a car. I'm wondering, because you get to see it all yeah. across a bunch of different yeah. verticals, are there any trends in common discoveries yeah. that you find when you start doing an MVP yeah. or a POC yeah. with a company, or is it very different depending yeah. on yeah. the company? Um, I think it depends very much on the company because um, your supply chain is also, in the end, right? It's, but on the one hand, it's based on what kinds of products you eventually produce and ship, but it's also based on how you structure your organization, mm -hmm. right? So a, an inefficiency and a, like an interface that you want to optimize in one company might be like not non-existent almost because of a better organization alignment. But what I what we typically see is that um, there's a journey also to get to the collaboration because the reality is like there's these different functions. They know and they also acknowledge they work in silos. They're not necessarily coll collaborating where they could. Um, and, and I think what we, the common pattern that we see is that we start in, uh, start in one particular function that has a particular issue. And then um, as soon as that function, but also like the adjacent ones, say, okay, there's something that we could do about this, and there's also a technology that can support us there, then like the appetite gets better, and then typically customers, like companies, they know where the issues are. Um, so that's a pattern that we're seeing that as, as soon as we kind of Start to giving everybody an understanding also how to apply this, I would say, fairly new kind of technology. Um, as soon as you have these cases that make a lot of sense in their context, then they start to kind of evolve. And then, like the specific interfaces, um, you have procurement and inventory management that naturally have, say, competing priorities. Uh, you have, if generally speaking, inventory is competing with a lot of different priorities when you think about on time delivery and so on and so forth. So there's, um, these are the very interesting ones. These are the ones that typically only like your C-level cares about. Um, so the, the interesting part will be how do we break this down, enable the collaboration to make these trade off decisions also at a lower level. I would expect that, you know, again, we had the chip shortage a few years back. Yeah. Supply, supply yeah. chains have been yeah. were screwed up all during the yeah. pandemic. I feel like everyone all of a sudden yeah. started to care about supply yeah. chains. Yeah. 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 yeah, from every sense of the side, too. And I, I think one of the interesting things yeah. is have you seen organizations really looking for better visibility? Yeah because yeah. of that and trying to look yeah. at, hey, how diverse yeah. am I yeah. in my supply yeah. chain? And is that one of the big use cases? I'm not the sense. Yeah. I'm not, and, and coming back to this previous one, right, that's also the, like, one of these situations where a lot of companies started to collaborate across functions, right? Because when you're out of a raw material, traditionally this was a procurement issue, right? But now you needed to understand what do I need this raw material for? What components do I produce from it? Who are the customers that are affected if they cannot deliver? So from that perspective, it was very interesting because like collaboration was necessary to understand it. Mm -hmm. But that's also kind of where a lot of appetite now came from. Okay, we need to have a system, a process in place of how we can deal with this more effectively going forward. Right? Right now we are in a phase where some companies are going a little bit back. Right? It's not so. It's not so bad anymore. But I think the general notion of I need to under I need to fast get an understanding for what is happening, what are issues, what are issues that I also urgently need to respond to. Um, that's definitely a theme, and it, it has been a theme for for a lot of years already in society, right? You you know that yourself. Um, but I think we are now really at a time where we can put this in in practice and really provide people with solutions to do this a lot more effectively. Um, that they did in the past. You mentioned that collaboration, and, mm -hmm. and I say this lovingly with venerable experience, is, is there is a lot of silos, or historically there's been a lot yeah. of silos. Yeah. I take care of my portion of the puzzle, yeah. I, I move yeah. it along down, down through the supply chain, or, or put it on the yeah. conveyor belt quite literally sometimes. How have you found the reception is when teams are implementing mm -hmm. Salonis mm -hmm. at scale and begin collaborating yeah. in the centralized dashboard yeah. form factor? I think the, the big difference is that of right, building up on the visibility aspect. 
it brings down the discussion to um, a database discussion, right? So where previously you, like, people were not sure about what is the exact situation, what is the status, where is the process right now. Now it's a database discussion to say this is the situation, this is what the data says. Um, and everybody might be aware, right? In order to improve, in order to resolve the situation, might be tougher on, on, on some than on others, but everybody knows this is the situation and now that we, we have the discussion not on what's the situation, but what do we do about it. And I think this is a big enabler. Um, it also comes with a lot of change in how you collaborate and so on and so forth, but I think fundamentally really this is one of the big advantages of putting this all together. Um, bringing everyone to like one single source of truth, one common ground, um, both horizontally, but also vertically, right? Like your top level executives are essentially looking at the same KPIs, obviously aggregated from the ones that you have to know, but everybody can make decisions in line with, with what the others are doing. Yeah, and, I, oh, go for it, Rob. So, yeah. so I, I think, just building off of what yeah. Savannah asked, I think one of the things that also has to be attractive to organizations that are looking at their mm -hmm. supply chain is the fact that, you know, things like Cellucor, which was just yeah. announced, mm -hmm. and things like being able to take data from Databricks mm -hmm. or Snowflake yeah. or your ERP systems yeah. here, yeah. it doesn't matter. The yeah. ETL can yeah. happen. That has to be a key to yeah. getting people to talk together. Uh, absolutely. And, and I mean, there is, there's so many systems uh, involved in supply chains that just came out of a customer conversation, very interesting supply chain. Um, where they have multiple systems, right? It's not only about, like, it's not only supply chain in the end, right? It's, if, you're, if you're producing new goods, you have your PLM systems, you have your engineering, your engineering change management processes, which then in turn has an effect on what you're procuring and so on and so forth. So that's a big advantage. And if you just look at supply chain as such, right? You have ERP, CMS, WMS. Um, and I think what's, what's very interesting, also a trend that I think will become more, more and more important going forward is there's a lot of, also systems that uh, data that does not reside in your system, right? So um, we talked about end-to-end visibility, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, end-to-end visibility is more or less limited also by the data that you have available. But there's a few uh, developments already that are happening, right? So there's trade visibility, which plays a big role. So I want to understand not only, like, when did I put something on a ship, but where is the ship right now? Is it affected by the Suez Canal blockage? Yes or no? Um, Second big topic, um, sustainability, right? Most companies don't know about CO2 footprint emissions, so they need to bring in the data from partners that can provide the data to them. And then there's, and from my perspective, the third big category is just risk, right? So if you think about um, geopolitical risk of your suppliers, financial risk, um, risk associated to diseases, politics, whatever, um, so that's three different areas um, that also, in, like in addition to all the systems that you're already using yourself, I think provide very, very relevant context to kind of expand that understanding of what's going to happen and where do I need to, what do I need to respond to. So many different X factors, yeah. like you just talked about. I want to I want to dive in a little bit to something that you just said that I was I've been very yeah. refreshed by at the show, quite frankly, mm -hmm. is the emphasis on sustainability. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Earth is the future. There's yeah. more structure. Yeah. There's, you can tell there's a whole push in the yeah. branding to raise awareness across industries and verticals yeah. about how to be more sustainable. Yeah. Which, first of all, I just think is great as a human of this yeah. planet, let alone in supply chain. Can you give us some customer examples yeah. of wins you've seen yeah. in the sustainability category to get yeah. the audience's minds buzzing yeah. on the type of impact yeah. you could see yeah. as well? So, so I think the supply chain and sustainability for many manufacturing companies, they go hand in hand, right? Because in the end, what you manufacture is probably 90% plus of the whole, or related to 90% plus of the CO2 footprint that, that you have as a company. Um, so, that uh, I think the case is where we see a lot of traction and a lot of success with existing customers. Um, do we essentially relate to these areas where there's typically a win-win situation? Right? Uh, what do I mean by that? If you think about shipping emissions, transportation, and logistics as, a, as an area which obviously has a, I would say, substantial contribution to, um, to the CO2 footprint of the company, 
this is typically the area where you have like the win-win situation. That's also where we see a lot of traction and success and cases that we can really also roll out across multiple customers, right? Because in this area, if you can change from air freight to, uh, to sea freight or to rail without jeopardizing any on-time delivery or anything, you both save on cost and you save on CO2. So win-win, and this is an area, if you can convince both on the cost and on the emission side, that's typically a win for, for everybody. Can be rolled out very easily, um, which is also important when we talk about sustainability, right? It's not sufficient if one company has a great use case, but a lot of companies in the end need to act in order to have a significant uh, improvement there. And you have the ability to learn from all of the different companies that you yes. work with to spread that good across yeah. other verticals. Exactly. I, the nice thing about sustainability is when we're competitive around sustainability, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which means, which is, yeah. well, I mean, in theory, the customer usually yeah. wins in that situation. And the reporting aspect of yeah. it as well. Because yeah. now, you know, yeah. SDC and yeah. others are yeah. looking into this, the EU yeah. definitely. And that's yeah. the three aspects that's of it is a big, yeah. big piece of that. So, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, the, that's the second area, right? And this is, right, I know that you can debate whether you like all the regulations and so on and so forth, but the regulations right now, they create more of these win-win situations in certain areas, right? If you look at material emissions, so emissions related to the, um, to the materials that you're procuring, right, as the CBAM, um, that is a topic for many of our customers, Yes, it's an additional effort right now, but from a pure sustainability perspective, it creates this win-win situation because customers now need to consider where they buy it from and are considering to go for cheaper op or like more sustainable options um, to also adhere to the regulation. So that's another case um, that we have a lot of customers being interested, be forced to be interested in, kind of. Um, so I think this is super interesting. Yeah. It is super interesting. All right, given that you've been around and seen the evolution mm -hmm. of the supply chain yeah. team and a lot of things happened at Salonis, you're clearly a star on the team, so we'll definitely have you back on the show when we're here mm -hmm. next year. What do you hope to be able to say when we sit down next time? Mm -hmm. It could be about the AI announcements today or anything else that yeah. you're, you're seeing get adopted yeah. now. That you, so what do you hope to be able to say yeah. then that you can't get today? Yeah. Um, for me personally, two areas. Um, we talked about sustainability. I would like to see more cases where you actually need to make a trade-off decision, right? Where going for the more sustainable option is maybe not the best when it comes to cost. So to also see some cases where we have customers willingly ma making the trade-off and kind of seeing an operating model that scales. We can support it by providing you with the context and providing you with the trade-off information, but that's one thing that I would be super, super interested in. And the other thing that I think is extremely interesting right now, um, everybody talks about AI and knows AI, uh, about AI. Um, what I would be very, very happy to talk about next is how we can specifically apply it and really improve the way we make decisions, right? Because in the end, um, I think the ultimate goal of a lot of what the Gen AI is related to is to use the reasoning capabilities to also, um, I don't want to say replace humans, but at least take some decisions that humans might not even have the capacity to, to take, right? And um, there's a lot of that. There's also an aging population in many of the Western world, so there's also a need to kind of become more efficient overall speaking. So that's the second area, um, to, to have more hands-on cases to scale this better and to really also not only make better decisions, but also automate the decision making and make it a scale. I love it, Peter. Well, I look forward to talking about better and more automated decision making, mm -hmm. sustainability, and all the other magic that you're yeah. doing over there on the yeah. supply chain team next year. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with us. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for having Thank you, me. Rob. I know we both were pretty pumped for this segment. Absolutely. And thank all of you for tuning in to what has been an inspiring and educational day here at Salona Cellosphere in Munich, Germany. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank you.